material and substance painter and high poly in blender being used in substance painter later on to show you what's the difference between a model with or without a basic high poly baked normals and probably it sounds a bit difficult to you but it's fucking easy you will see and i'm doing this for everybody who asked about those and i said that i will do it one day well the day has come uh, so i have a simple model of a grenade a tau photon grenade uh, made in blender here it is i got a uv map ready so it looks all right in substance painter so i can basically do some simple stuff like give it a material a smart material let's do it uh, let's go with some plastic just to show you how it looks without the high poly uh, let's go with glossy because why not well here it is one simple thing that you can do to improve uh, okay let's go with mine because it looks kind of shitty let's remove this layer well there you go uh one simple thing that you can do to make it look easier is add another fill layer and then add a black mask okay so what happened now is i'm adding a layer fill layer which basically covers all the texture everything with one color <coughs> and then i give it a black mask and black mask is basically you take a black sheet of paper or something and you basically put it on your model and then when you're applying paint on it it everything stays on the black sheet of paper so you have to make a couple of holes inside so it would get to the other side and those holes are color white so whatever uh, whenever something is white the color gets through the mask so when i apply some uh let's give it like a red color so you will see here i'm in the painting mode i select in my on my grayscale a white color and whenever i basically paint anything there it, it's not white it's red it's because i'm painting on the mask and the red is going through the black mask through the white holes in the black mask so you can see that the hole is here everything rest is not covered by the red color and whenever i put anything white on it it becomes red because the paint goes through the mask okay let's get rid of those and the masks are used mostly with generators oh another fun thing if you take gray color because you've got black and white but if you take gray it will be somewhere between going through and not going through so it will actually be able to see through it a tiny bit it's quite useful when you want to make something not with not much contrast uh, the applying different uh, values of grayscale anyway i've added a generator for now it's clear because i've just added it so it does nothing uh, so let me add a generator there are a couple of basic ones and the most used ones are basically dirt and um, the metal edge wear and what dirt does well for now you can see it just applied us some sort of mask uh, on our black mask so the red color goes through so it, you can basically put some noise uh, dirt on it let's make it like brownish or something yeah okay it looks all right uh, let's go with the edge wear now so let's add another layer another black mask uh, right click add generator and add where and what happened it's shite why is it it's because uh, they substance painter basically has no idea what the shape of it is for substance painter it's flat and to do something about that we can bake textures when you go to your texture set settings here up on the bottom uh, you can uh, find this bake textures thingy and 
this is where your high poly is useful. But you actually don't have to have a high poly. If you go there, here you've got the noise window, which basically uh, here you've got what sort of uh, maps you will be baking. You basically need, basically need curvature, ambient occlusion, possibly thickness maybe sometimes but anyway ambient occlusion and curvature are the basic ones that are then being used in the generators uh, and what space normal i think i'm not sure but anyway let's just keep all those here because if we have too many of these it doesn't really matter because we will not be exporting them later on but it doesn't really matter at the moment for now just leave it like that the output size is uh, the size of the picture, the, the normal map. Uh, 2000 is as much as you can have in uh, in Arma. Let's stay with 500 because it will be a bit faster. Uh, dilatation wave, I'm not sure what is that. Actually, it doesn't matter. Those things are quite important because they will say how far from the curvature uh, it will have an impact on the model. I will show you later. For now, I just want to show you that you don't have to have a high poly, because here is where we put the high poly uh, to bake the normals. You can use your low poly as your high poly. So the substance painter will try and recognize where what is what kind of curvature is up here on this uh, on this model right here without the high poly. So let's bake it. But there you go, and you can see already the that we have done is basically uh, where the that should be. So basically, wherever there is some sort of groove or a hole uh, in your model, so there where the that will stay, uh, it's there. To make it look a bit better, let's go with let's go and change the values up here. You can open the materials that you've put edit them so let's give it like a brighter color and the dirt let's make it more dark so you can basically see now that it the dirt is where it's supposed to be almost well it's there is some sort of crazy flickering here but you can get rid of that how do you get rid of that well it is a mask you cannot edit it actually but you can add it to like another mask so let's get a let's make a new folder put the dirt inside because this one is the dirt i think no i'm wrong uh let's remove this it's one that left is left over this one is the dirt and you can actually add a mask to the folder so now everything is black you cannot see through it uh let's actually make it white so it everything goes through but we want to get rid of this little ugly thing which is here let's go to our paint mode select our size brush a little smaller and let's make it black so it doesn't get through okay it still doesn't look amazing because probably something's wrong with my uv map so let's take a look let's take a look at the uv map quality you basically open it and then in this right hand menu you can see stretch and you can see that these parts are stretched a bit well basically uh, everything here is blue so it's all right when it's blue it's good and the more uh, yellowish or red it is it's worse let's go to here and check where those parts are okay those are here let's click here I know what what might be the case. I didn't triangulate the mesh before going there. What is it? I can't find it on the UV map actually. Okay, now I can see it. It's like here. Yeah, you can see how stretched it is. Actually, it's not that point. I want to see that point. Yeah, that's basically... Uh, this one is this one this here is this and it's very much stretched so you don't want to have this therefore i need to add a couple more uvs i mean uh seams 
to cut it out and also get uh, let's get this out of the way I think I forgot about a couple of things like this this All right, let's see, Maxim, on the up. Okay, it's very messy, but it looks all right. Basically, at this po moment, okay, so it's very, very messy because these, those sections are quite long, so we can add a seam right here to make them uh, a bit smaller cut them into smaller pieces uh, and actually I think only this one was just that long Rub, yeah they're very messy so what you should do now is basically take each one of these and just move it around set it where it would take less place and basically sort it out by yourself by we won't be doing that because we don't have time for this. Let's triangulate with Ctrl T, unwrap it again, uh, remove any doubles, is there any? It's all right. Unwrap it, it looks like that. You can see this kind of shade still being here, where we had those problems with texture. Another thing we can, okay, that it is sharp here. Maybe we sh can add some sharp edges here and see if that makes any difference on the shading. Yeah, it actually does. So basically keeping your sharp edges where they should be, it's also very important. Uh, but yeah, let's remember that because we want to be uh, happy with it. Let's only fix one and see how it actually looks on the module. Uh, save it, export it, FBX. Up here. One thing that is important, it's the naming of your mesh. Up here, you should name it uh, the name you want to basically have uh, underline low. You want to have this low part for the baking, and I will tell you in a second why. Let's make a new one with this. Thingy. What we did was basically getting this one and uh, no, hold on. You need a fill layer mm. with a black mask, with a generator once again, with some dirt, and we want to pick our textures from the low poly. It's very quickly, basically, the same thing we did before. Okay, you can see there is no sort of uh, strange things anywhere at the moment. Uh, let's see on the different colors. Yep, so it was uh, not the matter of uh, sharp edges, but the matter of triangulating the mesh. Uh, so yeah, uh, remember to Keep your mesh uh, triangulated before you get to substance fade. Okay, mm, going back to the generators. Let's go to the generator and you can see on the right there are some sort of options up here. So you can add and remove the dirt level. You can add some contrast to it. Basically lower contrast looks a bit more realistically. Uh, there is something that I think only works with when you have your high poly bake. We will see. The grunge amount is basically the amount of stuff you have that is just all over the the, the model, not in the in the granges, uh, in the grooves uh, and corners, just basically all over the model. Uh, the scale basically makes the tile higher or smaller. That's basically a matter of quality. Mm. 
And you can see if you go to very, very small scale, the tiling is very visible. You don't want to have that. So let's get the scale back. Up here, if it's too big, the patches will be uh, too big and you can see the pixels. Uh, you don't want, to, don't want to have that. It's basically up to you. Mm. Here you can see that it uses the images, the, the baked not the, uh, normals, not, not normals actually, but the curvature and ambient occlusion we've been using. And yeah, it looks all right, but still, uh we wanted to see how it would look like with a another generator which is the metalware and there you go let's make it a bit darker so you can actually see what i'm talking about okay there we go the edgeware looks kind of nice. It's not top notch. Mm, there is some very, very strange stuff happening here. We can get rid of that by masking, as uh, I showed you earlier. So let's add a folder, put it inside here, add a white mask and grab a black uh paint and just get over it get rid of it but you can see that here up on the corner it's missing something it's basically because we didn't have high poly and there were some issues with baking and we can actually fix that oh hold up You can see it happens here. Let's take a look at the mesh. I mean the UV melt. And no, it's not the matter of high poly. It's matter of overlapping uh, textures. I mean, yeah. So to get rid of that, let's just cut them. into smaller pieces, more seams, unwrap it again, there shouldn't be a problem now, so another thing that you should uh, take a look at when making your UV mount, let's export, let's make a new one, I should probably save this as a material, but no time for it. Shell, plastic, bake, once again, low poly is being used instead of high poly. And once again, we're gonna have some fun with generators. Let's go with fill, add a black mask, add a right click generator. Um, We've been having fun with Edge. Yeah, and now it looks much, much, much better, doesn't it? Here there is a some little error that we can just fix by a hand with the paint. It looks very nice for such a small thingy. And I really like it. I f I'd say that's enough. That's good enough. On the bottom it doesn't really matter. Uh, although it will, on every curved edge, it will get... Uh, this sort of effect of wear which is very nice basically the generator does all the job for you and it's awesome because you don't really have to have much of an experience but anyway uh, that's what we can have without high poly and let's go to blender and let's take a uh, look. that's what we can have without oh, high shut poly. Up myself and we can take a look at this let's get rid of those triangles because it's easy to work without them and let's make high poly and so basically to make high poly uh, you have to you know you have to have your mesh uv mapped and saved obviously and save it as another another file 
could save it as the same with high and you have to pay much importance oh yeah that's 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 not what i wanted uh much attention uh, to the name that you're giving to your mesh because always the low poly mesh and the high poly mesh must have the same name with only difference being the low and high being added at the end because when you go into baking the uh, settings in substance painter you've got this thingy here which says a uh, high poly mesh suffix is high and low poly is low you can change those obviously you can make it like an s and like a can't but at some point you will just uh get lost with it uh so let's keep it low low and high and stick to it because sometimes it will work but sometimes substance painter will go just fucking crazy about those names and will bake some very stupid stuff on top of your model instead of the real normal uh all right so let's get to it let's add some detail for example let's make a groove going around here uh so basically what we want to do is select all of those press ctrl b move our mouse a bit and here we what we did was basically bevel so rounding the corners and if you do it on a semi-flat surface it will just make this sort of thingy uh, with connecting basically where it should connect to make it proper uh, sort of mesh let's add like five more um, subsections of it because we can because it's high poly you don't have to care uh, about amount of poly at all let's make it three or let's make it five uh, you don't have to care about it at all because uh, it will be only a bake. You will see what ba what a bake is in a second. But first, let's select every two of them. Mm -hmm. What we can do now is maybe scale them a bit down, and we have a grove. Okay, it's nice. It's some cool-looking detail. We can also, for example, take this, press I to make this sort of thing, make the uh, B thing again, Control B thing again to add a bevel. Uh, we've added some uh, some more detail. It's not the best. Still, how about giving it a bit more? of grooves all over the place yeah selecting all of those it's gonna take ages anyway uh what we want to do is just add detail but uh it's not the only thing you will do in your mm, beveling experience and basically high poly making experience okay it looks like that it has a just strange okay it doesn't look bad there are some mistakes here but it's not the point you can basically do whatever you want with it just to add it some add some uh detail and uh actually there is a lot of stuff happening here and it will probably uh, cause some problems but let's just triangulate it and okay wait a second before triangulating and what we want you to do is pick one of those sharp edges just to show you um, that you can also bevel them because what bevel is actually doing we'll see now uh, when I press Ctrl B, okay. Apart from just Blender being retarded up here because it has triangles there for some unknown for me reason. Uh, 
it happens when you triangulate the mesh and you then quadratize it again. I'm selecting all the columns with control. Yes, we are here. Okay, now it's better. And let's make a small evil, which is basically, as I said, control D and you move your mouse uh, up and down, right to left, creating a uh, rounded edges. It will create some problems like this when you've got those stupid triangles, you have to keep your mesh clean, which I didn't unfortunately but but it won't be uh, that much of a problem but you will see now what's the difference between between like a edge this uh, which is sharp and an edge which is almost sharp but it's a bit rounded and uh, just to look a bit different uh, with the high poly mesh okay what you do you've got this strange looking it's disgusting to be honest but whatever for the sake of showing you how it works I will leave it like that. What you do it now, it's save it obviously, uh, export it. Before that, take a look at the UV map. It's fucked up, it doesn't matter. Uh, file export and now name it with a hi on the end, export it. Then you go to bake once again untick it because now we're using the high poly mesh which is up here and let's bake it and there you go you've got the detail and now i'm i started thinking can i spot the one that was rounded, the corner that was rounded. I actually cannot <laughs> really. We can see in the high resolution later on. And uh, yeah. Otherwise, you've got those little nice thingies added, but they're not actually part of the mesh when you look at that look at it from the side it's not there it's still flat but the detail has been added to it and the best thing is that the generator uh, understands it uh, I mean it knows where the uh, edges are and applies the uh, modifier where it should be take a look look out uh, on the higher resolution of the render mode uh, you can see those stupid little um, pixels on the on the mesh it's a grenade so when you like take a look look from on it from a bit away it wouldn't be an issue but if you're making something bigger you don't want to have those that's why you want to bake your textures in a high, high resolution in 2000 it will also make the generator work better without this flickering like here for example it should but we'll see in a second well there you go much better isn't it We can just have some fun here, let's give it more ground, but... Oh, and this is very important thing here, a curvature weight, I'm not sure if I told you about it. Here you can tell the generator how much of this curvature, how much of grunge, I mean, how much of wear should be on curves, how much should it like calculate the amount of the value of curvature at certain points uh, to adding grunge. If you get it to zero, it's basically the grunge itself. It's just the texture uh, being applied, You can, which is here on the grunge scale. It looks shit from far away. I mean, in, a, in the biggest scale because you can see the tiling. Let's make it a bit smaller. 
let's give it some curvature weight. Ambient occlusion masking is basically when there is a mesh close to the mesh, like here. Uh, it's sometimes useful. It's very important when when you've got like a um, weapon weapon model made of a couple of parts. So then the ambient occlusion will be important. And yeah, that's how you've got a quite nice looking grenade to make it look a bit better and more ta more tall let's give it a this good old nice brownish tall color let's make the wear a bit more yellowish just a bit brighter yeah and let's give it some dirt add a fill layer the color of that will be basically almost black it's very dark brown and add a black mask which will have a generator applying that there you go it's nice isn't it we can also okay take a look at this when you look at the dead, it's basically somewhat reflective, it's shiny, we don't like that. Let's get rid of it. You basically get rid of the, of the roughness and material on your uh, color. We can get rid of this as well. Because actually the armor doesn't care about it, armor only cares about, I mean, it slightly does, you've got those maps that will kind of try to describe it, but they will fail at it, more or less. So, basically one important thing is to get rid of those shiny places, if you want to get rid of those shiny places, you just turn off uh, the mm, material, oh no, material metal and roughness. You can get rid of those two because they don't matter, but the color is what makes the, the difference. Okay, we've got nice looking uh, nade. I mean, it's not the best, but you know, it has some detail on it and it looks cool for me. And it's fucking easy. It took like, I don't know, half an hour for, uh, for us, maybe less. It would be like 15 minutes actually without talking about it and fixing the small small dishes that you might encounter on your first projects but later on uh, you want you will get used to it uh, you can still see a couple of issues like here uh, but you can fix them by your hand or just by taking a look at the uv map and the model because i think once again i forgot to triangulate it yeah with triangulated it would be much better and the point uh, one I wa which I wanted to make about the uh, this oh my god I forgot how to move my camera about curving the edges is that they might make a difference but they probably won't make much of a difference now you can actually see that when I uh, made the Here is the generator. Yeah, when I made the curvature weight a bit smaller, you can see that on those edges that have been curved, uh, it's here, but not on this edge, which is basically a 90, I mean, a bit more than 90 uh, degrees um, corner. It's, for me, it's very important to basically get rid of all of your corners uh, which are sharp edges and make them like a very very small curved uh, edges because that's basically how it works when you take a look at any material which is looking almost like sharp edge it's probably not it is a small curvature well only if it's like a sort of knife or blade or something which is supposed to be like very very sharp it is sharp but uh, basically you won't, won't see much of those sharp uh, thing is all around, all around the place and if you do you can leave it on the mesh like that and yeah that's basically all I wanted to tell you and 
yeah, concerning that you most of you guys were asking uh, about buildings and texturing buildings, you will have to basically take all of your sharp edges and corners and make them a round corners. Round corners? Is this even a thing? I have no idea. Anyway, just use the Ctrl B in Blender, use the Bevel tool a lot, and it will give you noise, noise, noise. Uh, effects and if you have any more questions go into comments or just i don't know fucking call me on discord or something anyways uh take care and have a good day mates not here it's here